I'm just going to tell you a love story. So this is not a story about war, although it's bracketed by World War I and Vietnam. It's not a story about law, although three of the people I mentioned have among them tried a number of death penalty cases. It's just a good old-fashioned love story. But the problem with love stories is this. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. Unless you approach it from an elliptical point of view. So coming from a certain oblique, I'm gonna talk a little bit about geography, a little bit about history, kind of get you warmed up, and then I'll tell you this great love story. Furness County, Nebraska is on the Kansas border. The only thing between it and Colorado are Hitchcock and Dundee County. You understand where it is. And the county seat of Furness County is Beaver City. And it's very far south. It's right on the Kansas border. And if you drive into Beaver City, as you're coming in, you will notice a historical marker. Pull over. It says, on this spot, Wade Stevens, my uncle, took Dr. Brewster on the first flight ever in the history of the world for medical purposes. Now that I've told you the geography, here's the history. When Wade Stevens got back from World War I, Brewster said, I want an airplane. He gave him the money. Wade sent the money off to Curtis Mathis, and they sent the airplane back in two big boxes on a boxcar. And Wade, and a mechanic who'd never seen an airplane, took the boxes apart and assembled the plane. Now, now that I've given you that background, oh no, I'm gonna tell you one other thing about the historical marker. Wade flew Brewster down to Herndon, Kansas, where an oil worker had had a head injury. So that they know where to land, someone hung a sheet from a windmill. They landed in an alfalfa field, and Wade had to stay by the plane because the cows would eat it otherwise. It was coated with banana oil. So this is the, this is the history. He's assembled the plane. Now I'm going to go back way before. Wade Stevens and Flora Marie Warner grew up in Beaver City, Nebraska. Big houses with windmills and outbuildings, front door in town, back door in the country, storm uh, cellars, and my, my grandmother Stevens's peony acreage was the only thing between the two houses. In those days, they'd get around mostly by horse and wagon. They had electricity, and at 10 o'clock, all the lights would blink off once, then back on, knowing you had 15 minutes before the electricity for the day was over. Well, Wade grew up wanting to marry Flora Marie Stevens. That's what he wanted to do. Oh, but she thought it was just a little too close. I mean, here her brother was his football coach, and they just grew up next door to each other, and there's nothing very exciting about marrying the boy next door. There's just, there's just something awful boring about it. Well, as Wade was preparing to go off to France as a pilot in World War I, she saw him in his uniform and she softened. But she didn't want to be a war bride. She thought, well, no, I, I just don't want to do that. Well, he did all kinds of things to court her. One thing I find particularly charming is that he found the music to the song, There's a Long, Long Trail of Winding, and he sent it to her. Oh, how he tried. But Flora, Flora thought, well, he's a boy next door and he's in the army. And then he got back from the army and he taught French for a year and uh, at a country school. And she was about to say yes, but then he had told her he was going to go to law school. Well, she didn't want to be a law, school's law, law student's wife. And he just was getting nowhere. So, the day he was going to assemble the plane, he told her, wear boots and jumpers. Do not come out in a dress. So she was there in her trousers and boots, uh, wondering what he was up to. Well, the first flight he took, he insisted on going alone, of course. 
The mechanic had never seen a plane before. We didn't know how well it was going to work. So he took it up alone. For the second flight, he took Dr. Brewster. After all, Dr. Brewster paid for it. And then for the third flight, second chances, he invited Flora to come up. Now this was an old Jenny. You have to understand, one person sits in the front and one sits behind them. It's uh, what they call the two-seater, the old Jenny. You've seen pictures of them. And he took her up in the air. And in case she thought there would be something boring about a boy next door or a law student, he looped the loop. He did spin wheels, barrel drives. Uh, he did things that would, uh, well, would frighten the bejesus out of a, out of a seasoned traveler, let alone a young girl who had never seen an airplane. And as he whirls around coming in for a landing, he thought, now's my chance. So he said, Flora Marie Warner, will you marry me? And she said, oh yes! <laughs> and they landed, and Flora was so flushed that Mrs. Brewster ran out and said, you poor dear, you must have been frightened to death. I have a photograph of the two of them in a snowmobile on their 60th anniversary. <laughs> and uh, they had a wonderful life together. It was my honor and pleasure to practice law with Wade, whose father had been a lawyer from 1965 to 1968 when I went off to a different war. Uh, we stayed in touch with him, always met with him. We had a daughter whose birthday was in July and we would celebrate with Wade. And I was close to Wade until he died at age 86 and to Flora until she died at 103. So that was the second chance. And it, you see, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, but the point is, it was his second chance. It worked out, it worked out very nicely. And I could spend the rest of my time uh, kind of listing the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, and so forth and so on. But I'm not going to because I want to spend a few minutes saying that Wade Stevens uh, went on to do some amazing things and during the course of his career as a lawyer, in the 30s, he prosecuted a man who was a member of the Ku Klux Klan for the murder of his wife. And Wade arranged to have the body exhumed, the stomach removed, the arsenic was found, and in the process, the Ku Klux Klan. And there were no people of color in McCook, Nebraska. They were out there to take care of the Catholics. And that was the function of the Ku Klux Klan uh, in Beaver City, Nebraska, and in Western Nebraska in those days. I didn't want to get those Catholics coming around. Uh, but they attempted to burn Wade's house down. They attempted to kidnap his daughter. He steadfastly uh, stayed with it and uh, got the conviction. And there were many other things to his fabled career. He always felt particularly blessed and uh, they were religious people, they were Methodists. The Methodist church was about a block from the, their two houses, which were separated, as I said, by a peony field. But anyway, I've always thought that we get a certain limited number of chances in life, and it's a good idea to take advantage of them. You've all heard the old saying that uh, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Well, Wade decided he was going to create that opportunity. And if she thought it was boring to marry the boy next door, to marry a law student of all things, uh, well, then he'd show her what excitement was. And I think she got all she wanted. So that is my little story about second chances. I will state that uh, Wade lived long enough to uh, know my children to and Flora was friendly with Margaret up until the very end a lovely couple who lived life fully and are both they both spent their whole life very grateful that Wade Stevens did in fact take advantage of his second chance 
And so every, every February 14th, I come back home with a little box of candy for which I am criticized, but a good old fashioned card, one of the real old fashioned kind, that right on it it shows that Cupid has wings. Thank you.